Luke chapter 1. Get my notes on in here. Luke chapter 1. Left off. Okay. Luke chapter 1, verse 21, where I have we left off. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. Time is passing. He's spending a little more extra time because he's talking to the angel. The angel has a revelation for him. And the people are out there looking at, you know, I don't think they had watches or sundials or something like that. He's taking an awful long time in there. What's going on? So that's what that verse is saying. As we move on to 22, and when he came out, he could not speak. Now back to verse 20. And behold, thou shalt not, and thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, unto the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So he's not able to speak unto them. He comes out. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. What made that? What was it that that they noticed? Something happened in there, a vision. It says again, and when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision. In the temple, they perceive something about it. He didn't say nothing, he didn't write nothing. Maybe they heard voices. They like, oh, what's going on in there? Who's he talking to? Who's that guy talking to? He talking to himself? I don't know. For he beckoned unto them, making gestures. He's He's unable to talk and remains speechless. Again, dumb in verse one, chapter 1, verse 20, Gabriel is a true prophet. What he said happened. It's not like you go through the, 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 the services and you expect something to be done and nothing happens. Oh, because you're faithless. No. It's the power from God to make one unable to speak. Jesus is going through the Gospels. Those who couldn't speak, he's making them able to speak. Here you got the reverse. To perceive in the 1828 Webster's Dictionaries to have knowledge, to know, to understand. Knowledge came to them. Something happened. And something happened to Zacharias. Something happened in that holy place. And to beckon is he made signs. Sign language. Shows up in the Bible. You thought the sign language was something new and modern. No, not in the Bible. Nothing new under the sun. So there is your first sign language ever to show up in history. As far as the gospel verse 23 we're moving on and it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished finished done he departed to his own house so when he's done with the temple it's self-explanatory he goes home he finishes everything he has to be done he doesn't leave it half done He leaves no chore undone. He finishes completely before he leaves for home. And, and after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, So he goes home. He has relations with his wife. And I wonder if he wrote her. He couldn't speak. Honey, let's, let's go into the marriage bed because you should see what I've seen in the temple. 
And his wife probably turned, boy, you know, you're not supposed to be drinking when you're doing that, hon. Well, no, no, uh -uh, no, we'll be right. I'm not drinking. This was true. I don't know what happened. You know, it doesn't tell you. There are things that just, the Bible just, you got to leave to your own imagination. Did he write to her telling her what happened? Did he just let it go by course of nature? Is he still unbelieving? I have no idea. Thus has the Lord dwelt with me in the days wherein he, God, looked on me to make away my reproach among them. I have a little problem seeing, so just forgive me, bear with me here. All right. We are up to verse 25. He has made, thus has the Lord dwelt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach among men. Children are a Jewish family's blessing. The reproach was she had not had any children. She's an old lady. Where's your children for Zacharias? Hannah cried because, oh, this this woman here is irritating me. And we're going to look at it. Let's go to Psalms 113.9. My nose is itchy. Psalms 113.9. About, about children being a blessing. This is a great gift to an old woman. Can you imagine her going up to her doctor and saying, you know, there's, there, there's something going on with me, Psalms 113, verse 9. And you imagine the doctor laughing like Sarah, like, lady, my test says you're pregnant. <laughs> imagine the doctor thought, this sounds awful familiar. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> you know? Imagine telling an old lady she's going to have a baby. Sarah thought it was funny, didn't she? He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Wow, that's a great verse that will match with the coming Messiah of the forerunner of the Messiah, the voice of a wilderness. Here's a barren woman. She's going to keep her house, and now she's a joyful mother. Now, she had a child. She didn't have children. But as a mother who was right in the law and done all that and brought up her child the way she was supposed to, does she get the fruits that John the Baptist got? Because she did everything that God told her to do? I wonder. But praise the Lord. Psalms 128 verse 3. Now we're looking at Elizabeth's side. She's pregnant. Her husband won't talk. Making her mad. 128 verse 3. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy house. Thy children like olive plant round about thy table. Fruitful vine. It, it brings fruit. On the side, you can reach out the window and grab a fruit. Reach out the window and grab a cucumber. Olive plants were, were used. They, they would take the olive. They would make oil olive. And that's what they would anoint themselves. That's, what they, that's the type of the Holy Spirit. That's what they would use to anoint the high priest and the priest. So it's a fruitful, wonderful time. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. Isaiah 4 1. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread, 
and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Here is women who want to be called by the man's name and not their father's name. Because there will be a shortage of men. That's going to be the tribulation period. There's not going to be enough men for the women. And you're going to have a ratio of seven women for one man. <laughs> Listen, we'll take care of ourselves. We're now women, but let us be called by thy name. There's got to be something in the tribulation period that those women have got to be recognized with a husband. Or just the fact is that, oh, we need a man. Things will change. We need a man. We need a husband. But we'll take care of ourselves. We'll earn our own living. But let us be Mrs. Such and Such. Leviticus 26 9 Leviticus 26 9 You know it'd be a reproach for a woman not to have a husband I mean he just picture She's living in her father's house. And he's like uh, you ever gonna leave You ever gonna get a man? You ever going to have your own children? Leviticus 26, verse 9. No page. Page is stuck. 26, verse 9. For I will have respect unto you, and make you a fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. Fruitful. Children. Talking to the nation of Israel. It's a joy and a blessing for them to have children. 1 Samuel 1.6 1 Samuel 1.6 First 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 6 We read And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret, which means worry, because the Lord has shut up her womb. That's exactly what Elizabeth is going through. The reproach is, you don't have a child. She'd be looking at all the Jewish mothers, you know, wish I had a baby. Wish I had a son. I wish I could give Zacharias a, a son to, that one day he'll be doing what his father does in the temple, but I'm bearing Genesis 30, 23. Genesis 30, 23. In Genesis 30, 23, the Bible says, And she conceived and bared a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. That's Rachel. She's been watching her sister and the handmaids have all these children. Uh, yeah, 11 of them, counting Dinah. Finally, she gives birth to the 11th son. It's like, oh, man, I've been wrestling with my with my sister. I've been having problems with all these handmaids and all that. Finally, I have a baby. Elizabeth is, is a type of Rachel. Everybody else is having babies but her. Chapter 17, verse 6. Genesis 17, 6. I mean, the best thing, I mean, if you can't have children or if you're not married, go help out in the nursery. Live that joy. I will make thee exceedingly fruitful and will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. He's speaking to Abraham. The Jewish line were told from Abraham, you're to have children. You're to multiply as the sand on the sea and as the stars in the heaven. Again, here is one woman who's unable. Psalms 127 verse 3. You know, she may even be thinking at times, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it's a sin. 
Hannah goes to the temple and just lays all out in the line, Lord, if you give me a child, I will give you that child for all the days of his life. Psalm 127, verse 3. That's how desperate she is. And God honors that. And blessed her with children. And blessed the nation with Samuel, who was her son. In Psalms 127, verse 3, the Bible says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Imagine what she's thinking every time she hears that song. Where's my reward? What's wrong with me? Oh, Lord. Why am I having difficulties and problems? Aren't we right? Then doesn't the Bible say in chapter one they were right and, 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 and perfect in the law? Obeying everything that they were doing, and here they are, old and no children. Isaiah fifty four one. Isaiah fifty four verse one. Now, this is a wonderful passage. We'll read right down to verse 5. Sing, O barren. Well, I don't really know if you really want to sing. Didn't we just do a psalm? Didn't we look at Psalms 113, Psalms 128, and Psalms 127, the hymnal of the Bible? You really don't want to sing, Lord, because, you know, if I had children, I'd be right with you, and I don't have no children. Thou that didst not bear break forth into singing cry aloud thou didst not travail with child oh that's really that's just pushing the needle and in, in, you know into the belly oh man lord for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife saith the lord mm, wow okay Enlarge the place of thy tent. Now that's where they live. They lived in a tent. Enlarge the tent. You know what that means? There'll be more people. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Stretch forth that tent. It's going to be, you're going to need it. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords. Make the tent bigger. And strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate city to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Elizabeth was. She was a reproach. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. She's old now. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. And you talk about the nation of Israel. God has left them. He comes back to them. For thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall, be, shall he be called. It's a blessing that you can stretch forth that tent for family. Back to Luke 1, 26. And then you guys think, all right, just like uh, Sarah, here's this big joke, and this old lady's going to have a baby. I bet you there was a lot of skepticism for a while there until the pregnancy started to show. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Okay. You want to see something interesting when you're doing Bible prophecy and when you're looking at the, the missing church age in the Old Testament? And when you see a comma or a colon or a semicolon or a verse or a period, between that period among men and, and in the six months, between 25 and 26, six months has happened. 
That's a long period. That is, between those periods, you know, the morning sickness, you know, the, the feeling the baby move, going buying clothes from the nursery. That's a, that, There's a lot missing in there. Six months. What's that? After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself for five months, saying, What you're told in 24 is she takes off. It's a, it's a side note. Between 24, 25, and 26, there are six months. Five of those months she takes off. Now, after that, six months. Gabriel is again called upon. Why? I don't know. Why not Michael? He was the prince of Israel with the news that's going to come now? The Messiah? Why was Gabriel called and not Michael? I don't know. And he's from God. Not from Satan. He's not from man. And then number four of this verse, Nazareth is in Galilee. Not Nazareth. Nazareth, a city in Galilee. Because we're going to see this happen. We're going to see this event come up again. And it says, well, you know, they, they went and lived in Nazareth, and he shall be called a Nazarene. Not a Nazarite. So. We got a lot of verses coming up in 27. So I think we'll stop right there in 26. Another thing is she's in her sixth month of pregnancy. And we're going to see it in a little bit. Let's tell you, John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus Christ. And we'll close right there.